for the victims of psychoanalysis. I think about the month of June 22nd, something. The pledging conference for the first time in the history of the international community. It was called ASEAN UN Pledging Conference. The UN people were not very happy. <laughs> UN Global ASEAN, just a baby, regional. How could you come first? But because of the special situation that we were in, we were asked to take the lead. And we did take the lead. And we created that tripartite core group. And we got a pledge from the Prime Minister at that time, now the President, Mr. Benson. You will have, because my condition was, the next day after Singapore, my condition was, this core group must have access to you at the highest level of your government. Otherwise, we are not going to succeed. He said, I promise you, you will have access to me. And he appointed a minister to sit on. So, this was repeated somewhere in Haiti later on. This particular moment. <coughs> Myanmar took very little time in that meeting room in Singapore, about half an hour to break, called young one and then the tour and came out and said we would like us in the UN to come in together please. We were there for ten or two years. We were asking, we were hoping that we could expand the space so that we could engage with other poverty stricken population of Myanmar beyond the footprint of psychologists. We were not given that permission. We asked if we could also bring the modality up to other regions. Because we know other regions also are suffering, not because of the cyclone, but definitely because of poverty, because of disease, because of underdevelopment, because of illiteracy. Uh -huh. Only that particular mission in the delta of the Ayabati River, south, southwest of Yangon. It was a tapestry of diplomacy, Ambassador. Because so many factors helping a country in transition after 60 years, preparing for its own elections. In the eyes of the world, the government is not quite legitimate. But we have to accept that. And we have to deliver. So at the pledging, Mr. Ban Ki-moon was there, the Minister for Affairs of Singapore as chair of ASEAN was there, I was there, representing the organization. And the message we gave to the people and the leadership of Myanmar was, watch this. Because the representatives to that pledging conference came from all around the world. The U.S. Ambassador to ASEAN was there. Minister of International Development Cooperation, UK, was there. Norway was there. Japan was there. All the countries that cut themselves off from Myanmar during the time of the military junta, all the way back, all converged onto Yangon. The message 
that I made perfectly clear to quote Mr. Nixon that the entire world out there is not entirely antagonistic to the other. That the world can put down any conditionality, any condition to deal with the problems in front of us and this is humanitarian catastrophe happening before us. You have goodwill around the world. Give us the space. Give us the confidence and the trust we will deliver. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe one of the most powerful success and consequence of our engagement on humanitarian ground with Myanmar was the, not the rehabilitation of four million people that we did. But I think to infuse into the leadership of Myanmar that yes, the world has good will for us that we can trust the international community if one, two, three are done. You remember the elections of 2010. Yangon based diplomats were invited to observe. February last year, before I left office, in fact, a month before I left office, when ASEAN decided that Myanmar should be the chair of ASEAN in 2014, there was going to be a by election for about 50 seats. Madame Aung San Suu Kyi decided to join. And I said to the president, this time, president, you can do no less than 2010. Invite the relevant people from the capitals of ASEAN this time, not only the diplomats in Yangon. And if possible, invite media from ASEAN because you are going to be our chair in 2013. He said we won't disappoint you. He didn't say much. Two weeks before the elections, the invitation came to members of parliaments of all ASEAN countries. And you know some of the ASEAN countries don't have parliaments. To the media of ASEAN, to the media from around the world. I may be selfish, ASEAN may be selfish, but I think I will good cooperation and good results in the relief, in the recovery, in the development, two years with psychologists certainly have given them that trust, that confidence to open up slowly on their own ways. So you see the converging points between a humanitarian catastrophe because of the natural disaster called Cyclonagis and the other dimension that had to be evolved inside Myanmar, political dimension. That somehow converged, we now have a new rally of the international community. Mr. Obama went in, Mr. Cameron went in, Mr. All those who were opposed for so long went in, and we have a new country. So the first lesson 
is there is there are no two catastrophes that are the same. Natural and humanitarian catastrophes can always be if we are careful, if we are good, used to deliver and to create and to infuse new attitude, new mindset, new confidence, and new relations among and between nations. Now, I began with that because I think it needs to be amplified. I think every crisis is an opportunity and every catastrophe has its silver lining, silver lining clean on top of it. If you look for it hard enough and carefully enough. Now, let us look at the role of the Asian Disaster Preparedness Center, which is the host of this important series of lectures here today. I have asked the organizers to distribute few sheets. I hope you look at them. Sorry, I didn't prepare talking points so that I can put it on the on the air in your files. We are more likely to face catastrophes, natural, that have some relationship with the change of the climate from now into the future. And that's why this center is important. That's why the mission of this center is extremely critical. Let us forget, forget about the rest of the world. In ASEAN alone, 75, 80% of our population live less than 200 kilometers from the coastline. I don't know how many provinces in Thailand now are under flood. But definitely at the end of 2010, the damage was extremely high. And it has consequence into the confidence of people who would come to locate and relocate their factories here. Yeah, investment, foreign direct investment into Thailand is now in doubt because they are not quite sure. How are we to handle the next flood? And the next flood is, we thought it would be two or three hundred years into the future. It's just now, here, right now, East Coast, Eastern Seaboard is under threat. So if you look at this first chart, number of climate-related disasters around the world in the last three decades, We have had 3,455 3, floods, big and small. We have had 2,689 storms, big and small. We have had 470 droughts, which means famine. We have had extreme temperature, 395, all around the world. And you can see the graph. From 1980 to 2011, the graph, all the lines of all these items are going upward.
the UN Climate Authority just issued another report two or three weeks back. And the summary is only one line. Human beings are most likely the cause of climate change and lower on than we are now suffering. And you can see it in the graph lines. Right. So it is extremely important that we are aware of this that we are prepared to do something about it and that we learn to adapt and learn to mitigate and learn to manage. Best of all, learn to prevent. Look at this one. The economic and human impact of disasters in the last 12 years, in dollars term, in the last 12 years, 1.3 trillion.